Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna go over everything you should be doing to make sure you get hired right when you graduate, especially if you have no experience. Let's go. So I think a lot of us engineers kind of subconsciously assume that once we graduate, there's gonna be a long list of job offers just waiting for us to choose from. You know, we made it through the gauntlet of the degree, right? So the career should just be our reward, right? It should just be handed to us along with our degree. And unfortunately, that's not exactly how it works, right? It can be easy to forget that you actually still have to go out and earn that first job, right? You have to you know, sell yourself and convince employers to uh, select you over all the other candidates. And this is no small trivial feat, right? Especially when you're a new grad and you probably have zero engineering experience. And you know, now that I think about it, I actually graduated with someone who took six months to get that first job, right? So even though there's a ton of opportunity and a lot of job openings uh, for engineers, there's a lot of competition and a lot of other candidates who are equally qualified, right? So it is not automatic, right? You're not gonna automatically get that first job. You still have to go out and make it happen. So then the question is, how do you land that first job, right? How do you maximize your chances of being you know, selected over other candidates, right? Especially when 98% of entry level job openings require one to three years of experience. So after talking with a bunch of engineering recruiters, engineering managers, and career advisors, I've collected the most important and impactful things you should be doing to set you apart from the competition. Starting with networking. I know you've probably heard this before, you're probably sick of hearing about it, but the truth is there's probably nothing that holds more potential power towards you landing that first job than a strong network, especially when you have no experience. In fact, according to this 2016 survey, 85% of jobs are obtained through networking. That's a lot. And look, I totally understand that the concept of networking can be kind of intimidating and a little bit nebulous, especially when you're still in school. But I want you to understand that networking doesn't have to be some official thing that you only do at career fairs and industry talks. No, networking at its core is just trying to get to know as many people as you possibly can and making a good impression along the way. You literally never know what kind of opportunity can come from just one connection. This stuff makes a difference, trust me. For example, I got my first internship from a friend I made playing pickup racquetball. It sounds crazy, right? But stuff like that happens all the time, right? Especially to people who put themselves out there. So take inventory of everybody you know, right? Everybody your family and friends and neighbors know and reach out to everybody who's relevant and make sure they all know that you're in the job market. And you know, more generally, make a habit of just striking up conversations with people, right? At work, at school, at the gym, or on the train. And I know that initiating you know, conversation with strangers is probably pretty low on the list of things that you wanna do, right? But you have to trust me here that this skill is probably one of the most valuable things you can develop as an engineer, especially as an engineer and especially when it comes to interviewing, which we'll go into later. And the last thing I wanna say on networking is to make sure you have a profile on LinkedIn and Indeed. You know, most recruiters spend a majority of their time looking for talent on these two sites alone. And don't be lazy when you create these profiles on LinkedIn, right? Include as much information as possible because recruiters usually search using filters. So for example, if you're a mechanical engineer and you don't include the term CAD experience, you're probably not gonna be showing up in as many searches as you should be. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the video so far. If you are, you know what to do. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share it with your friends. That kind of stuff really helps the channel continue to grow. And if you're thinking about studying in engineering or STEM discipline, be sure to check out my book. This book is the comprehensive roadmap for anybody and everybody to get to graduation. So everything that I did and learned and implemented to go from a 2.0 to a 4.0 and a master's degree in engineering, it's all in here. Mindset, self-discipline, motivation, right? Stress management, time management, studying performance, and of course, exam performance. It's all in here. It's getting a ton of great reviews and helping out thousands of students all over the world. And it actually recently made the bestseller list in several categories on Amazon. So if you're a new student or you're a current student and you're just struggling a little bit, I guarantee this book will help you. It's available in paperback, ebook, and audiobook. I'll put links in the description for everything. Thanks for the support and back to the video. 
Okay, the next thing I wanna talk about is skills and certifications. So outside of your degree, there is a huge list of skills and certifications that you can work on in your own time that will set you apart from the competition. And according to the managers and recruiters that I've talked to, this stuff makes a big difference. So there's a huge list of certifications and skills that you could consider depending on what you're majoring in. But here's a list of kind of the most overarching and valuable ones that will for sure make a big impact on your resume. Lean and Six Sigma. Obtaining a Six Sigma certification demonstrates a deep understanding of problem solving techniques, statistical analysis, and project management skills. So it demonstrates an individual's ability to lead process improvement initiatives, drive organizational change, and deliver results. Now it's important to note that you probably won't be able to finish a Six Sigma certification because typically you need real world professional project experience to get the full certification, but you'll be able to start it and that just in itself on your resume should make a big impact. Next up, we have software development. There's a super long list of software development certifications that you could consider depending on your skill level. But one thing is for certain, no matter what branch of engineering you're studying, knowing how to code and develop software or you know applications is gonna be super valuable. So I recommend becoming familiar with Java, HTML, and Python. Next up, we have Computer Aided Design, or CAD. No matter what you're majoring in, having CAD experience on your resume is gonna be valuable. So I recommend becoming familiar with one of the main uh, CAD software tools, SolidWorks, NX, or AutoCAD. Next up, we have AI and machine learning. Artificial intelligence and machine learning are all the rage nowadays, right? Every company wants to figure out how to utilize it to make their business grow. So if you're able to teach yourself on the side how to create tools using AI and machine learning, there's gonna be nothing but upside. So speaking of CAD, Excel, and MATLAB, and several other software programs, your university probably offers these programs for free or heavily discounted. So be sure to hit up your computer lab to take advantage of these perks. Okay, the next thing we're gonna talk about is your resume. And on this one, I have some good news for some of you. According to the National Association of Colleges and Employers, GPA is becoming an obsolete metric when it comes to screening for interviews. In fact, according to the data, only 37% of current employers still screen candidates based on GPA. All right, so if they don't care too much about GPA, what do employers care about? Well. According to the data, uh, employers care about these six things more than anything else. Problem solving skills, teamwork experience, work ethic, analytical and quantitative skills, communication skills, and technical skills. So when it comes time to construct your resume, try to highlight job experiences, achievements, certifications, and school projects that highlight those six things. And when you construct your resume, I really want you to kind of have a mental shift. I want you to view your resume as an extension of you. It is your representative when you're not in the room. So think about it this way. If you were preparing for a big interview, you would clean up, get a haircut, you know, put on something nice. You would look your best, right? I want you to think the same way about your resume, right? Regardless of the words that are actually on the page, your resume should be pleasing to look at. So it's super important that your resume make a good first impression, right? Because more often than not, this is gonna be the first thing that employers see that represents you. So it should be one page, it should be well formatted, well organized, and have really good utilization of space. And you gotta trust me here, managers make uh, subconscious judgments based on this kind of stuff. And then lastly, make sure that you tune your resume uh, according to the job that you're applying for, right? Look up the job description of, the, of whatever you're applying for and then try to use words and phrases that make sense from the job description and make sure those show up in your resume, okay? Because this is really gonna increase your chances of making it past any computer generated screening system. And you know, I could say a ton more on this topic and I actually plan on making a longer video just dedicated to resumes in the future. But until then, I think a lot of you would really benefit from checking out today's sponsor, Resumable. Resumable is one of the top resume building services for a reason, right? When you sign up with them, you're gonna be assigned a personal writing professional with recruiting experience in your specific field. So depending on what kind of jobs you're looking for, they're gonna know all the ins and outs of what kind of stuff needs to show up on your resume in order to get that interview. And if you just wanna try it out, Resumable offers a free resume review where you upload your resume and then your team of professionals will analyze it based on global standards and then offer actionable feedback. 
And probably the best part about Resumable is that they guarantee that you'll get an interview within 60 days of completing your resume. And if you don't, they'll revise it for free. So they're kind of in it until you figure out what works and start getting interviews. And the last thing I'll say on this is 70% of candidates are rejected based solely on their resume. So do yourself a favor and invest in your resume, right? There are a few things that will pay you back as well as a highly tuned and professionally created resume. So feel free to check out Resumable. I'll put a link for them in the description below. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is career fairs. So I think that a lot of students might look at career fairs in kind of a negative light, right? Like it's all for show and nobody really gets job offers. Wrong. Kids get hired at career fairs all the time, right? I was one of them. I got an interview and a job offer from a resume that I just handed in at a career fair. So, and I, I know the company that I work for now hires kids from career fairs all the time. Actually, several of them are on the team I'm on. So don't look at career fairs as a waste of time. The fact is that most companies attend career fairs because they are looking for good candidates to hire, plain and simple. So do not skip any career fair that's held at your school or any surrounding school in your area, right? Don't forget that career fairs are held at all universities and colleges, right? So try to attend as many as you can. And so the first step when you're preparing for a career fair is to research the companies that are gonna be attending, right? And then to prepare a list of well thought out questions for the companies that you're interested in. And then the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to prepare and practice kind of a one to two minute elevator pitch, right? Just a short uh, pitch that describes yourself, any important and memorable facts, and kind of generally why a company should choose you over somebody else. And you're gonna wanna bring several copies of your resume and something to write with and take notes on, right? Something like this. Um, it's just a simple portfolio. I picked this one up on Amazon for like 20 bucks. If you don't have one, I highly recommend investing in one of these. I'll put the link for this one in the description below. They look good, they look professional, and they are essential for interviews and just kind of professional life in general. And then lastly, make sure you dress well, right? You wanna look good. Don't look like you just rolled out of bed, okay? You don't wanna give any employer, you know, an opportunity to put another candidate ahead of you, right? And then the other reason is because you wanna be interview ready. Um, a lot of employers will kind of make a list of the standout candidates from the career fair and then hold legitimate, you know, one-on-one -on -one closed door interviews later that same day. Okay, and the last thing that we need to talk about, but definitely not the least thing, is interviewing. So I've said this before, but it really bears repeating because interviewing is probably one of the most underrated and important skills that any engineer can cultivate. Because if there's one thing that can level the playing field between a less qualified candidate and a more qualified one, it's a great interview. So the interview is where you're gonna have a chance to show off your personality and characteristics that aren't on your resume. Like how professional you are, how well you communicate, how respectful you are, and how you know, good of a fit you'll be on their team. So step one in preparing for any interview is to research the company and the position that you'll be interviewing for and to prepare a list of non-HR related questions based on that stuff, right? And then to practice interviewing with a family or friend, right? You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're ready for the most common questions. Tell us about yourself. Why should we choose you over someone else that is equally qualified? What are your strengths and weaknesses? Give us an example of where you overcame adversity, where you failed, and where you had conflict with a team member or coworker. And what was the most complicated project you worked on? And describe why it was so complicated. And during the interview, be sure that you were just honest and straightforward in your answers. You know, interviewers are just as interested in your character as they are in your experience, right? So you just wanna be genuine, right? Be genuine in your answers, okay? Interviewers want to know who they are hiring. So you don't wanna be some robot trying to just throw up canned responses. Take your time and be present during the interview, right? It's okay to pause and be thoughtful in your answers. You don't wanna ramble, okay? Thoughtful silence is totally okay. So the interview is where you can really establish yourself as a top candidate regardless of your GPA or, or academic performance. I can tell you from my own experience in engineering management that once uh, the candidates made it to the interview, I considered the playing field pretty much even and I would use the interview as kind of the main thing to direct my choice, right? So you're gonna wanna make sure you prepare accordingly and you'll do great. And the last thing I'll say about interviewing is to apply to every single job 
that you can, right? Eat well before you graduate, apply to everything and anything. Even if you're not particularly interested in the position, getting interview experience is invaluable. So then when that dream job comes along, you'll knock it out of the park. Okay, so those are kind of the main things you should be focusing on um, to make sure you land that first job right when you graduate, right? Um, especially if you have no experience. But I wanna make something really, really clear. Out of all of the recruiters and managers and you know career advisors I spoke to, they were all super consistent in saying that the most valuable thing on anybody's resume is an internship, right? So you're gonna wanna make that your number one priority as early as you can in school. You know, freshman, sophomore year, you're gonna wanna really start uh, thinking about and trying to land an internship. Number one priority. The good news is that the recipe for getting your first job is basically the same as landing that first internship. So everything I've already talked about in this video, right? But if you want more, I've already created a longer video focused on just landing an internship. So I'll link that in the description. But that's it for now. I hope you guys found that helpful. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I really appreciate you watching and be sure to check back for more engineering tips, advice, experience, and information. But until next time, thanks for watching and keep up the good work.